Hey y'all, it's Taylor Monet. Welcome back to my channel, and today I'm here with a get to know me. Okay, so it's been a while since I've done a get to know me video. I've had so many more new subscribers since then, so I just want to say hey everybody and thank you for subscribing to my channel. My channel is here to talk about modesty, faith, and lifestyle. I enjoy doing YouTube very much and I'm just happy y'all decided to subscribe to my channel. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Taylor Monet and I am here with a get to know me tag slash um, Christian get to know me tag slash Christian Q&A. Whatever title you want to put with it, I just didn't want to do just a traditional get to know me tag. Um, I wanted to incorporate my lifestyle and that's me being a Christian, me loving Jesus with all my heart, me being a child of God. So that's what I'm here to do today. So I'm going to hop right into these questions. First things first, just an introduction. I already said my name. My name is Taylor Monet. That is my actual name. I did not make it up. I did not just come up with something cute. Um, that is my real name uh, that my mother gave me. So Taylor Monet is my name. I'm uh, 25 years old. I absolutely love Jesus. I, um, some hobbies of mine, oh, I like to bake. Um, I love to go hiking and bike riding and walking and doing nature things. I love spending time with my family. I love music. I like absolutely love music. Um, I wish I could play the piano, but I'm not that great at it, but I hope to be one day. But yeah, I love to do YouTube. I've been doing YouTube um, ooh, since this channel. When did I start this channel? Okay, so I started this channel in 2016 but I didn't really get active on this channel until about three years ago I've always loved doing YouTube I used to do YouTube back in the day in middle school before um vlogging was even called vlogging I used to just vlog at school and things with me and my best friend so yeah I love absolutely love videography photography and things as such um, which is why I enjoy doing YouTube content so that's a little bit about me why did I start my YouTube channel so Initially, when I started my YouTube channel, it was based off of natural hair content. But I said, there's so many natural hair content creators. What's something about me that I can just share and enjoy talking about? And that's my lifestyle. So I began to do um, videos about just Christian lifestyle, Christian content, um, prayer, my testimony. If you go back and look at some of my old videos, you'll see like my testimony video. Um, you just see some encouraging videos. And then I tapped into something that was like new to me to actually broadcast and that was modesty although once I got saved I changed the way I dressed I didn't really have an appreciation for the way that I dressed I was doing it for formality um, rather than a heart posture but God worked with my heart and really just shaped my heart to fall in love with modesty and presenting my body a living sacrifice for him so that's why I just felt in my spirit to start doing modest content and that's I absolutely love doing modest hair content or not modest hair modest clothing content so now when you see my page um, you'll see Christian content, just encouraging words and things, and then you also see some modest clothing content. Um, and that's another thing I'm into. I love fashion. I love to dress up. I love to put things together. I love to be creative. Um, the way I dress is another way that I can express my creativity as well, while honoring God at the same time. So, next question is, when did I give my life to Christ? So, um, I gave my life to Christ when I was 16 years old. And first off, before I even get into when I gave my life to Christ and why I gave my life to Christ. Let's talk about who Christ is. Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer. Jesus Christ, the one who was sent down from the Father and was sent as a sacrifice for our sins. When we were in the world, living in sin and could not save ourselves, Jesus came and he died on the cross for our sins. But he, not, he didn't only die, but he conquered sin and conquered death and rose in three days. And for that reason, we now have an advocate with the Father, which is the Holy Ghost, and we are able to go before God ourselves in prayer, and we go before God um, because Jesus, our High Priest, came and fulfilled the law and blessed us to be able to go and pray to our Father, our Father, which are in heaven, um, and allow um, for the Comforter to come, and that which is the Holy Ghost. And Jesus, once he left, he told the disciples, I'm not going to leave you without a comforter. I'm going to send a comforter who's going to bring things to your memory. And you're going to receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, which is the Holy Ghost. Um, so what is Christ? What is the Holy Ghost? I just kind of gave a quick synopsis. But I received Christ and received the Holy Ghost at the age of 16. Um, and just a quick testimony into that. I, whew, as a teenager, I, you know, you know how teenagers do. They want to rebel. Oh God, just listening to all type of music, not, um, even though I was raised in this lifestyle, raised, um, and come from holy, sanctified parents, 
you have to really accept Christ for yourself. You are going to have to stand before God yourself. You're not going to be able to stand before God and say, well, my mom was saved. Well, my dad was a Christian. No, it's all about you and making a decision for yourself. And I was in that position. Although my parents would say we were going to church every Sunday, I had not fallen in love and received Christ for myself. I was still living in sin. And um, yeah, when I was 16 years old, I had an experience um, and I was listening to some secular music and literally um, God gave me a warning while I was listen to, listening to my secular music and he sanctified me from there. He took the secular music um, desire away from me, uh, the music I was listening to, he took that away from me. And then upon there, um, I just got tired of just being rebellious. Although I was young when I got saved, I still needed holiness. I still needed um, the Savior. I still needed to be cleansed from my sin. I still needed someone to redeem me and that's Jesus Christ. And I just, one day I just, I just grew tired and I was ready to just submit to God because I was tired of just trying to do life myself. I was very unhappy um, as a teenager. I was, you know, very unhappy. And the crazy thing is being a happy person and a go-lucky person, even as a child, just very bubbly and happy. That's something that the enemy wanted to destroy. He didn't want me to tap into the happiness. He didn't want me to um, just be happy and enjoy life. But God came and he restored me and um, he saved my soul. He made me whole. And I'm not saying that the Christian life has not come with challenges because we know tests and trials will come. But we have power once we receive Jesus. We have power and I thank God for power to overcome the enemy. So yeah, I got saved when I was 16. And uh, why did I give my life to Christ? Because I needed him. Why does anybody give their life to Christ? Because we need him. We can't give our life to Christ based on anyone else. We have to give our life to Christ based on us realizing that we can't do it on our own. And we need salvation. We need we need reconciliation with God. You know, we need to be free from our sin. Um, that's why we decide to give our life to Christ. And Christ just comes in and he just dwells in us. And he just abides with us and sups with us and lives with us. He's in our very being. And I just thank God for that. It's an awesome relationship knowing that I can go before God and pray. You know, that's an awesome relationship to have. Knowing that in my times of doubt, in my times of worry, in my times of, you know, anxiety try to come up on me. I have a father who I can pray to and he can hear me and he can help me and help me to overcome those things. So... I just love Christ. I just I just love living this lifestyle. So God is good. God is really good. So the next question is why I promote modesty? Why do I promote modest fashion? And it's because first off, we live in a society that has so far separated themselves from modesty. We live in a society that has separated themselves from um, presenting your body a living sacrifice um, unto God. We have we live in a world where you know, realizing that this is our holy temple. Um, we live in a world where that's not really appreciated anymore. Um, without getting into detail, people are mutilating their bodies. Um, people are marking their bodies. Um, and they're doing things and not realizing that this is a temple for the Holy Ghost, it says in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 6 to 9 um, in, the King James, in the King James Version says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? which ye have of God and ye are not your own. So realizing that our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost when you receive it, there's a way that we have to um, present ourselves that's gonna be separate from what the world does. I'm not gonna show all my skin. I'm not gonna wear extremely tight clothes. Um, I'm not going to have an immodest attitude because modesty is not just in, fa just in fashion. Modest modesty is also in how you present yourself in character. Um, so I promote modesty because I promote Jesus. I promote serving Christ. And I realized that in serving Christ, there is a character that comes along with it. How one part of just having a character of Christ is the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy is on my wall, y'all. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, goodness, temperance. Above all, above such, there is no law. So there's a character of Christ. But there also has to be a physical appearance that, has to, that we have to separate ourselves from from this world and that's what I love about modesty because when someone sees me and sees the way I dress they're gonna know just by the way I dress that I'm honoring God with the way that I dress you know I am honoring my body with the way that I dress so that's why I promote modesty and with modesty I also love the fact that um, you can be creative with modesty and there's always been this stigma that you know modesty has one specific look and modesty there is a standard to modesty but you can also express yourself in your in your style through modesty and that's something that I love to do I get that from my mom actually um, my mom she she my mom she loves to dress really really nice and she just passed that down to me and that's something that although um, I'm dressing modest 
and not even although, but with and conjoined in in um in conjunction with me dressing modestly, I'm also able to express myself. Um, so I really love dressing modest, and I really love to promote it because a lot of people don't see this now in today's society. A lot of people don't see when social media, when um, media in general, TV, movies are are promoting women showing every part of their body and women not presenting their bodies for Christ. I have to be the one to stand up and say there is a way. There is a difference, and that way is dressing, dressing modestly. And also, like I said, it's not just in the way we dress, but it's in our attitudes. Because someone can dress modestly and have on, you know, something that appears modest, but their character is against Christ. So I just really want to promote just the fullness of this, as well as dressing modestly. You could also, you also have to have a modest character, and, we, and I thank God for that because the Holy, the Holy Ghost will reveal that to you, and reveal how you should be in character. So that is why I promote modesty, and I absolutely love. I absolutely love modest fashion. Um, some of my favorite places to shop that are like, um, I guess, mainstream places that people probably won't even think of that have modest clothing, H&M. I love H&M. H&M has a lot of modest clothes um, that I you just have to know what to find. Um, but H&M, I absolutely love Shein. It's one of my favorite spots. If you've been following my, cha my channel for a long time, you know I love Shein. Um, Forever 21 has some things that you can find there. Um, this is an Old Navy dress. So Old, Na Old Navy actually has a lot of uh, modest dresses. You can really find something modest anywhere. You just have to know what to find and don't compromise. Just because you don't see something in that specific store doesn't mean you just settle. Go and ask God to lead you, and he will actually help you shape your your modest fashion. If you desire to, to dress modestly, God will provide a pathway for you that, to do that because you're honoring him with your body. So, so yeah, those are a few of my favorite places to shop um, and find some modest clothing. 